What is up, Minnesota Viking fans? Welcome to this week's Purple People podcast. My name is Kyle Smith, and I am joined by Kyle West. How are you, sir? I am doing well. We have some pretty fun news to talk about this week. Uh, I like the name of the show. T.Y. McGill is my new favorite Minnesota Viking. I'm sorry, Justin Jefferson, but T.Y. McGill is a pretty cool dude. I T.Y. Like T.Y. <laughs> I love it. That's Adam Carlson at the bottom there. How are you, sir? I had T.Y. on my 53 when I projected it, so I'm, I'm not surprised he's doing it. This is a good scheme for him. Good fit. At first, you know, you were saying some people said you were a little crazy for putting T.Y. McGill on your 53 roster. I also got told I was crazy for not including Albert Wilson. And guess who got cut today? Albert yep. Wilson. Yep. Guess who had him on their roster? <laughs> this guy. Guess who didn't Did have T.Y. McGill? This guy. <laughs> I know nothing about anything. So I'm feeling pretty good right now. So far, everything's standing up. But I know there's going to be that surprise cut. It's not going to come by Tuesday when it goes down to, what is it, 85? 75? 80, 85, I think. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say it's 75 for tomorrow. And then 53 the week after. But yeah, cuts are going to be coming fast and furious, and I'm hoping my 53 can stand up. Well, we got some changes coming in the quarterback depth chart for sure. Uh, the big news today is they signed one from the Raiders. Uh, what do you guys think? Were you surprised at all? A conditional seventh round pick isn't really anything to give up. I mean, all it, he has to do is, I think, be active for one game and it becomes a seventh round pick. But I don't think Minnesota's going to fret too much about that seventh rounder. I feel like, and I'm, I know that a lot of people have this opinion, but I'm just going to go off of literally last year's reference. Rick Spielman would have given up like a third for this guy. He gave up a fourth oh, round pick for a tight end. hundred percent. Yeah, he gave out a he gave up a fourth round for a tight end that caught like two passes last year. So you yeah. see him catch a touchdown though, I think, right? It, yeah, I was at that game. He caught his one touchdown <laughs> <laughs> at that game I was at. But the point being, like, they found a value and they addressed it. And and I I said this today when we agreed to schedule the show for tonight. I I immediately start prepping, even if it's the smallest percentage, shortest mm -hmm. amount of time, right? And I'm thinking, okay. There's got to be someone in every franchise, no matter how big their role is or voice or opinion or whatever in the, bu the building. They have people in the building of every football team that looks at social media and sees what the, the heartbeat of the fans are. Now, are oh, yeah. they going to make business decisions because fans are mad? No, but they had to have known and seen that, oh my God, these people are pissed. I, I, and my little little universe on Twitter that's mostly Vikings – it was the quarterback number two is not on this roster. And remember, I can't give you like official reporting because it was just kind of in the air. But there were talks a week ago that said, you know, the Vikings are done shopping around for a backup quarterback. Mm -hmm. And it came today in the form of Nick Mullins. He started in San Francisco. He was serviceable. I just think that this regime is actually they actually care because if Kirk went down and we had to choose between Mond or Mannion, you're a top five pick the next year. And I firmly believe that. Oh, yeah. So, We've been talking in our private chat to our, our group chat about what, what the Vikings could do. You were running down a lot of the free agents, taking a look at them. And honestly, in the free agent pool right now, there wasn't much. Now, Nick Mullins has shown he can step in, play some games at a reasonable level. And you're not, actually, you're not screwed if he comes in. You've still got a chance. And Minnesota has enough talent on its roster that can help out a quarterback that's talented enough to win games. So, yeah, I think this is a, a fantastic thing. Uh, Nick Mullins might not be the backup that you, you know, <laughs> you're never going to have Aaron Rodgers as your backup. That's not right. going to happen. But Nick Mullins is definitely a significant upgrade over anything that was on this roster for a backup. So what we need from a backup quarterback is you kind of, I don't want to jinx this, but you have to, in my opinion, assume Kirk's probably going to miss another game with COVID. Like it's this very shit, possible. 
it's very possible. I agree, Adam. This shit is really contagious, and it's not going away anytime soon. So he's probably going to miss a game. So you need a backup quarterback <clears throat> who can step in and win you a game if necessary. And I really don't believe that prior to Nick Mullins, that quarterback was on the roster. Uh, Kellen Mond is not good. He's really he's really far behind. From he's not ready. From where he, he, he might be able to be ready a few years down the road with some practice, you know, and, and changing up his throwing motion, getting some nerves in the pocket. Correct. But yeah, I mean, he's he's not there right now. He's not ready. He might not and ever be ready. Sean Mannion, from everything I've heard, he's a a really smart, intelligent quarterback. He probably has a really firm grasp of the system and understanding, you know, how to read NFL defenses and all that other stuff like that. But he is not good. He's a coach. I, he should be yeah, a coach. He, sh- he should be a coach. Or an assistant, he, assistant coach. That, that's the perfect segue. That's what they should do with this. You you have a high investment, not with this regime, but the last regime, a high investment in a quarterback in the third round in Mond. They didn't really give him any kind of chance last year. I mean, it was open that the coach was like, I see him in practice. I'm not impressed. Paraphrasing there. But that's what he said two reporters for the whole world to right. hear when he knew his job was about to be over with in about eight days. So he didn't care. They didn't really give the investment. Cause they're like, Hey, this is our guy. You're here. Like just fit in. If you can, this regime has a quarterback friendly coach, a quarterbacks coach from previous years with our current quarterback, former quarterback in the league, give him the chance. But what this does is what Adam said. This could give Mannion the chance because there, there ain't nobody trading for him. So if you cut him, you're like, oh my god! I hope he goes to the practice squad. I don't think anybody would pick Sean Mannion up. I truly don't. Hire him as a coach. I'm not sure Mond would be a someone that another team would want to take another look at at this moment either. Not at this moment I, in time, but I'm still optimistic, like you guys are, that you could invest in him and he could make strides. Now, this is certainly better than the the three throws we saw from him in the regular season last year against the Packers. He has a touchdown under his belt in the preseason. He's had some moments, <laughs> but there are some things that have to be addressed. But I think going forward, I don't know. Are we keeping three quarterbacks on this roster? Here's what I think. I don't think there's a going forward with Kellen Mond. Uh, I'm, I'm just being 100% honest right now. Uh, I think that you're, he's on staff number two. Like you said, Zimmer looked at him, and we got his blunt, brutal opinion on what he thought of Kellen Mond. I think that uh, the current administration gave him probably a fairer look. And we reached a point where they traded for a replacement because he's just not where he needs to be. I think that ultimately he is not right or wrong. He's not the responsibility of this coaching staff for them to get him up to speed to be an NFL quarterback because he was not their pick. He was not their project. He was not their pick. They gave him a fair look. I think that they're just going to cut ties with him, move on. Uh, will someone else pick him up? Yes, I do think so. He was, what, a third-round pick? Mm-hmm. There will be someone else who will kick the tires, kick the tread on him, uh, see see what maybe what they can do with him, give him a look. I don't think it'll be Minnesota. Um, are they going to run with two quarterbacks this year and put uh, Mannion on the practice squad? Potentially. That's your scenario where if you want to go heavy and if you want to keep an extra running back and a fullback on your roster, you can you can trim back a little bit on the quarterback and keep keep your emergency QB and Mannion, who, like you said, Smith, I don't think anyone else is going to covet him. You know, if you release him, I think you can get him back on the practice squad pretty easy. And I'm personally not too concerned about what you do if you release Kellen Mond, if someone else picks him up. OK, fine. What was it with the old regime for the Vikings wanting all these project players that they had to I put so know. much time and effort into like creating? Well, they had talent, but they just needed to be formed. And I don't think that coaching staff either wanted to take the time to teach these players to do new things or really had the resources to do so. Now, to bring in uh, you know, the new quarterback... His, he was on a one-year, $2 million deal. I have not seen how much of that Minnesota has to absorb. I'm assuming some of that was a signing bonus. But, I mean, for what it is, that's not too bad of a hit for a guy that should come in 
and be the absolute favorite to be the backup. I like it for him too because he feels, you know, wanted. I know backups, you know, they, they change around all the league, but it's like right. hey, this guy's traded for me. It's a pretty good team. Um, he knows where he's at. He knew his role. I mean, he was behind Jimmy Garoppolo, who I think is not as good as Kirk Cousins for the longest time. But yeah, I this I think this is a good move on the part of this management. What did you feel about the Vikings being a touch aggressive in pursuing him by trading for the seventh instead of waiting to see if he got cut or somebody else got cut along the way. I think you it think speaks that, to what Kyle said. I think it speaks to them not yeah. having faith in either of the other two guys. You think it's a little bit of a sense of urgency to get somebody in there? A little it's, bit. It of had that. to have looked pretty bad. And they guess you you guys remember Kirk was out for a few days, so it was just those two and then the practice squad guys, or if there is any. There isn't. Ugh. Yeah, that, no, one, that had to no have been like the emergency alarms going Jake off. Browning actually played in a preseason game for another team in week two, and he had a pretty good showing. So, I mean, the fact that he's not on this roster and he had a decent showing in Vikings, two backups just kind of cringy. It wasn't good. Well, what I like about it and what I think speaks differently from how the team is ran now compared to the previous administration is. Guys, they actually use training camp and preseason to evaluate the roster and make a move accordingly based on the talent on the field and not wait, Smith, until a situation arises where we have to panic and then, holy shit, we're trading a fourth round this year and a seventh round next year to bring in Nick Mullins in you know week four of the regular season because Kirk all of a sudden had COVID and we don't know what to do. It's like, okay, we're evaluating talent, and it feels like we're making a smart, informed decision. What well, I'm still a touch too. sad though that it's not Gardner Minshew. Uh, a yeah. little, yeah. I would have loved uh, yeah. to have had him and his beautiful hair and face <laughs> here. Love that guy. It's. I heard that in the off season too. He just lived out of a camper and he parked next to a gym <laughs> and just worked out all the time. Yeah, He's my awesome. favorite. <clears throat> but it speaks to. Um, I, I lost my train of thought. I'll let you guys go ahead. Sorry, I had a I had a moment there, and then saw Gardner Minshew's beautiful mustache, and I got. To oh no! <laughs> oh, that is, that's definitely is distracting. Well, I was going to say you can be a little critical of him because we've all known that Mannion's not good. I don't think anyone was coming yeah. into this into this new administration going, "Oh my God, Kevin O'Connell is really going to help turn the corner for fucking." He did throw his first NFL touchdown last year. <laughs> he did. He did, but we all knew that Sean Mannion was not good. I respect them for giving Kellen Mond the opportunity that he got, but it is on them a little bit for not bringing in a little more depth prior to this. Like, they waited probably longer than they should have to address the backup quarterback position. Well, they probably Uh, thought they were fine because last year, you know, Minnesota ran with Mannion and Mond, and boy, they got kind of lucky there that it wasn't more serious with with Kirk missing only the one game, but whew. Charlotte, yes, you're right. That was his first and only. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I was going to say, I lost my train of thought, was it speaks to the coaching, too. This this regime and the last one, every time you say administration, Kyle, I think about, like, the presidency we're in, and I, my <laughs> mind goes to the worst places. But um, <laughs> how to get a quarterback, yeah, that kind of thing, like doing the, <laughs> yeah. doing the hand motions or whatever, but... Yeah, you would have to take a page like look last year, which is bullshit by the way, because we have to talk about the top 100 players ranking. Now I got to shit on players today, and I'm going to catch a lot of heat for that. But look at Mac Jones and the Buffalo game. They had no business beating that Buffalo team. New England is like in a hard place right now. They've been in a hard spot since Brady left, but they've been in a hard spot the last two seasons. And last year they had no business getting in the playoffs, but. By the Bill Belichick way, they found a way in. But they had a game where their quarterback threw for three passes. Yeah. you got to have like a little wherewithal to know your limits on guys like that. And I'm sure Kellen Mond is not as good as Mac Jones, and that says a lot. The but weather in that game was absolutely atrocious, though. It was, and they played to the strength of that. But my point to that being, think about back when Christian Ponder got hurt. He was nothing fun to like look at all the time on the football field. <laughs> but – he was serviceable, right? He's probably I the bet best. I bet you still followed his Instagram, though. What's that? I bet you still followed his Instagram. Oh, I did for sure. Looking for <laughs> Samantha. Love you, mean it. Um, but the point <laughs> being, you remember you remember the playoff game with Joe Webb? How they tried to make him do something he wasn't 
fit to do. And yeah. we were all screaming at the television for three hours. I like that this regime finds it and they say, okay, if you're not going to fit what we're going to do, we're going to find somebody we think can. This guy is serviceable. And to this comment right here, I don't like this at all, Charlotte. That means Kirk's going to go down, and I don't want that. That's the whole thing we don't want to happen. At least but Minnesota's does, better prepared now. But if it does, yes. that were to happen. Now we are prepared because, like I said, I said it earlier, you can run it back. I think we all feel this way. If Kirk would have went down and it would have been Mond or Mannion show, top five pick next year. And now, that's not to no say we there. all, we all, we all would have loved for Kellen Mond to step up, have a terrific preseason, come out, throw a bunch of touchdowns, you oh, know, maybe 100%. still make some mistakes for a young player, but to show that development, like that he was ready to become, if not a starter, which you know would be amazing, but a player that could be a backup for a long time. And mm-hmm. so far, we haven't seen that, and, and that's. What what brings this up? And it's disappointing the Vikings had to go outside their organization to get a backup quarterback, especially this late in the preseason. But got to do what you got to do. I'm clarifying. In the Should we be here. surprised though that Rick Spielman drafted a quarterback that wasn't very good? <laughs> <laughs> drafting quarterbacks another- has never been something Minnesota does great. Now yeah. running backs. Now we're th- okay. Minnesota drafts some good running backs. Yeah, we have a wealth of running backs on this roster right now. Uh, you I, you could, I, if I didn't put the periods there, you could name this episode after Ty Chandler. I mean, no, no real reason to because T.Y. I McGill. That- Chandler had that really nice rushing touchdown. We followed Ed Ingram right into the end zone, and that was, that was sweet to watch. Yeah, it was pretty good. Obviously, I named this episode after T.Y. McGill because he's having himself a preseason, and uh, he's definitely going to make the roster, but – yeah. Would they say this is 10th team or something like that? Uh, I'll be honest with you guys. Like I didn't watch the game. I, watched I know it's a very high number. <laughs> well, he's had a different team every year he's been in the league. <laughs> That's and what's fun. Of, some years you know, he had a couple teams. Yeah, you know what, though? That's what's fun <laughs> about preseason is every now and then there's a player like T.Y. McGill who's just kind of the – the veteran journeyman, and somehow he gets in the right system with the right coaching, and you're you're seeing him, like you're you're seeing the best version of Ty McGill right now out here for the Vikings, and that's the kind of depth that you want to have on this roster. Like no one is expecting him to go out there and compete for a starting spot on this team, but that's not the role we need him to play. No, we need him to be that backup reserve guy who can go out there and maybe make a play for you once or twice a season, you know, when he's rotating in and out there and be a part of a package. And that's, that's, this team has had such bad depth the past couple years that when, when a starter goes down, we're just. That linebacker depth the last couple of years, they played above their potential, but the floor was low. Yeah, it's been awful. And it's exciting (laughs) to have a guy like T.Y. McGill on the roster that like, Hey, you feel a little Okay. If he needs to rotate in and get some get some playing time out there on the field for you, well, a guy like that too, you got to think not not only the field presence, but he can mentor a guy like Jalen Twyman. I mean, if you've been around that long, you can give the young guys some heads up too, which I love because there's the hierarchy of the starter, the backup, the veteran journeyman, and then the basically the rookie because Jalen didn't play last year. But it's crazy. I don't remember Ty McGill's exact stats, but I think he has like. I have everything right here. We can run down that game. Oh, I wanted on, to answer no, Andrew's thing has... right here. Okay. And I'd love to have Mond uh, put the ball in the right place. Not even as good as bad Kirk. What was his completion percentage? 50% with zero touchdowns and two picks. So that And Mond is... opened the game with some nice throws. He mm-hmm. moved the ball down the field pretty well. I thought he was starting to look a little bit confident. Then he threw that one interception and he was absolutely shook. After that, he really started running so the ball yeah. too long. He was he was really indecisive from that <laughs> point on in the game. Yeah, the decision making was slow. Uh, he wasn't really paying a lot of attention to the pressure around him. Uh, let's let's be honest. Some of those second string offensive linemen weren't doing a fantastic job of no. protecting <laughs> him. But I mean, uh, I, I guess quarterbacks will get a lot of the talk about this, but. There were, there were so many times when the defense struggled to stop the, the run or, you know, uh, 
I, I guess I can, I can say that uh, Alexander Madison bounced back a little bit. I didn't see a lot of Madison slander on my my Twitter timeline after Not this nearly game. As bad so. as the other day, <laughs> or last <laughs> that first preseason game. Whew. Yeah, I thought Vikings running backs looked pretty good. I thought a lot of the younger receivers looked pretty good. BC Johnson. You're ready to count BC Johnson out, and then he comes out and has himself a little bit of an outing where it's like he's still got to factor him into the roster as well, too. I really think that if you were looking, if this staff was looking at either him or Albert Wilson, BC played himself into another week on the team because they cut themselves Albert Wilson. We kept BC Johnson around for, for a little bit longer here, guys. Like, you can't completely cut him out either. I believe in one of Kirk's conferences he actually talked about bc coming back and how he was excited about that because there's that familiarity there and how they throw the ball around together well in practice and you know so so it's like there is a connection there and hopefully the vikings want to develop that a little bit we forget at one point he was what wide receiver three on this team yeah yeah he was way up on he was way up on the depth chart and we have a wealth of talent at receiver and running back right now that bc johnson is a fringe player on this roster we've joked about how you could put him on chicago and he might be a receiver one or two on chicago he ain't Pete and go cold commit <laughs> so but the tight end depth for minnesota is looking a little scary ugh. zach davidson i mean i love that they're trying to take this tall player who's athletic convert him into a tight end but so far he has shown that he needs to work a lot on his concentration and his hands because he really struggled to haul in passes. Sometimes in preseason for a fringe guy like that, you get one opportunity to make a splash play. And when he dropped that pass, that long pass up the middle of the field, I hate to say it, but that's it. You kind of you kind of sealed your fate with that one. You and really... he was another one of those project players. Yeah. Don't like that. And I get where they were going with the project player. Because every now and then you hit on your Daniil Hunter. And oh, yeah. when you hit when you hit on your Daniil Hunters, you look fucking smart or your Stefan. Oh Gibbs, yes. And you look real smart on Isn't your that late- so Minnesota though? They could just go f- take a flyer in the third and they get like a generational freak. Yeah. But it's it's defensively. It seems like for <laughs> the longest time outside of running back and then the occasional splash receiver. Hey, cool. Everything else is like uh hit. Oh, I'm, I'm uh, missed again. I hate it. I'm fine with it every now and then, but I think Spielman got too cute and was trying to do it all the time. And you can't make a living off of drafting a Chaz Surratt, a quarterback, <laughs> and converting him into a linebacker. And like, it you're, sucks, you're, dude. You're We've all played to- fantasy football with a guy yeah. who wants to draft all the sleepers. Yeah. We've all drafted with that guy. And that guy's team always ends up very close to the end. Of the Andrew, <laughs> you know this. This is Johnny Munt season. Come on, man. Put some respect on that guy's name. <laughs> it was weird that Munt set out this game. You know what's funny? Some of the people I follow on Twitter were calling out, like, because there was a lot of people out this game. I don't think the Vikings are going to start any of their, like, starters. Is it all preseason? Huh? Last name. And I just laugh because I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. You're right, but, I mean, it's kind of – if Patrick Mahomes is playing in the preseason. Yeah. I well, mean, did you hear Kevin O'Connell's reasoning why so many players were out. Uh, they had the joint practice with the 49ers all week. And in his opinion, he felt that the starters got enough quality reps during the course <laughs> of the week with the joint practices that they Debo didn't, didn't feel that way. way. Who didn't, who didn't feel that way? Debo Samuel. Did what you see him talking about how those practices were useless? <laughs> no, I, I I guess I didn't catch that. Fuck you, so Debo. That... You're useless. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your. Well, I don't know. Up. That's that's just what our coach said. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that if they felt that the starters got the reps they needed during the week, it makes sense that they would use that that time for some of the backups to give them the opportunity. No, I did feel that Ben Ellison did a good job as backup tight end in that game. He caught a couple passes, got some good blocks. Yeah, I like I like Ben Ellison. He might not be Jimmy Kleinsasser or something, but you know he's, he's he's getting there. I want to go back to shitting on Debo Samuel. I don't want to hear from Diet Percy Harvin again about the Vikings. You do whatever. Oh, Diet Percy Harvin. You you do whatever San Francisco <laughs> things do. All right. Good luck with Trey Lance, by the way. Douchebag. Hey, I heard that Justin Jefferson just torched 
the 49ers all week in joint practices. So I saw that too, but then you see people that were, you know, San Francisco beat writers or whatever there, they had some good reps too. Like I feel like this was a very I'm good sure. learning code curve for them. But yeah, I, all the highlights from Vikings Twitter was like, oh my God, we're amazing. And then I saw a couple of our uh, guards and one of our tackles getting warped by the Bosa, uh, the Bosa machine. And I'm like, Ooh, that's <laughs> I'm, I'm, I still don't like Bosa. Not after that hit on, on Brian O'Neill. I, I can't. That was so cheap. You, you don't hit a guy from the side, give him a concussion because he's been working you all game. That's just not cool. Yeah, I don't like that. That's the shit that needs to get out of football. No, Andrew. He is definitely catching passes from the goat down in Tampa Bay. Sorry. He is back at practice after a two-week hiatus. Hopefully his mom's okay. That's what I heard the real rumor is around why he was out, which is always sad. I also heard it was partially him just pulling a farve and being like, look, at this stage of my career, I don't need to go to training camp. Which, hey, he's Tom Brady. I get it. I've seen the articles about him being on a game show, too, and stuff like that, so who knows? Yeah. That's all right, Andrew. We got you. Yeah, I named this episode after T.Y. McGill. Um, somebody asked for his stats earlier. He had three total tackles, two solo, and one and a half sacks. I think he's got, what, six sacks through the preseason? I mean... Four? I think it. I think he's up to like four because I remember looking at his career totals. I think, I think it's five. technically three and a half in the preseason. Okay, I was a little high on that. My bad. But his career totals, guys, are like five point five for sacks total for his entire career, and he's got like what do you say, Adam? Three and a half in yeah. preseason already. Like he's having himself a pretty pretty monster preseason performance he's got to be feeling good I'm even if he doesn't lie. end up on minnesota's 53 someone is going to pick him up or he's going to go on the vikings practice squad because he will be able to keep his nfl dream going based on what he's done so far this year i, I absolutely love stories like that like you show me a journeyman player who after this long in the league can break out and like i love that shit see i got kind of sad about a story like that too because uh, you know, I, for a second there, it looked like Chad Beebe was kind of following the Adam Thielen route of being an undrafted player, starting on special teams, playing well, getting some opportunities yeah. on offense, catching some touchdowns, and now he got released by Houston, so he's a free agent again, and Minnesota, honestly, has no reason to bring him back with their wide receiver room. So, yeah, I mean... Too much depth, and he couldn't ever <laughs> quite catch on in special teams the way you would have hoped. And the, Mike, the Vikings couldn't even bring him back right now as a punt returner because, uh, let's be honest, punt returner looked pretty bad during this game again, and it looked bad in the first game. So yeah. there's no answer at that point right now. But, I mean, you couldn't even bring him in to do that because there's just not the room on the roster. I, if you guys want to make fun of me for a little bit, I'm going to give everybody ammo here. I thought T.Y. McGill was a rookie that we got this year. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> I'm looking. Dude, this is hilarious, though. He's been on over 10 teams, but you look at the list and you count the number 10. Dude, he's been on the Chargers three times. He's been, <laughs> in, he's been to Washington twice. So he's just bounced around. This is incredible. Now I see the Tom Johnson reference that you guys are talking oh, yeah. about. This is see, really that's... cool. That's what immediately makes me a fan of someone like him. Is that yeah. just like I, I love the opportunity, and like you said, it might be preseason, but when he was out there doing his ty sack dance, he was amped up and pumped. Like you, you oh, can yeah. just feel it. He's uh he's got the North Carolina credentials for college too, NC State. So ty, I'm rooting for you, buddy. He'll make the he'll make the roster. I think so. As long as the Vikings GM don't call him ty Hilton anymore. <laughs> I must well you know who's that. not making the roster we talked about already but i brought it up on on uh, si just to have it up and available the vikings have released albert wilson which we talked about earlier and they yep. have waived defensive tackle julian taylor um and this is ahead of the second wave of roster cuts that are coming up so now taylor's cut was a medical one right he'll be able to return to the team and they'll yes. uh have him on injury for the year and he'll probably end up sitting it out staying a viking but not you know being able to play so getting rid of uh albert wilson because you have to bring in nick mullins i mean i'm guessing that's why that transaction happened um 
not the first guy I would have thought of that they would have cut, but hey, nonetheless, if that's where you feel, uh, I'm sure he can go land on another squad. So I want to say the Vikings are at 84 right now. And right now it's uh, 85 is the cap. Tomorrow, I think it goes down to 75. Mike Capon, how did the center do this last game? I didn't watch, man. I was at working, and then I'm going to be honest with all of you guys. I watched the highlights later. UFC, if you missed UFC 278 this weekend, you missed probably one of the best fight cards ever, but I didn't watch. Austin Schlotman looked bad. He did not look good. Come on, man. I told you you're going to be on my roster, my 53. You got to play better than that. I did really good at that, guys. (laughs) Really good. He was getting pushed around pretty bad again. I think the only potential starting offensive lineman that was out there was Ed Ingram, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think they only want to see a little bit more from him to to see what he's doing. And I think he I think he did enough to where he probably moved up and could be on the on the, the depth chart for the right guard one coming yeah, up. I was but... gonna say, are you comfortable enough to pencil him in as a starter at this point, you think? I would. But yeah. I mean, there's still one more game to determine some of these uh, battles and that are happening in the preseason. And there are still positions to be won. Uh, the punter position is actually an interesting one because uh, there was one short punt that was disappointing, but then there was one amazingly long punt by, I think it was number 66, right? I don't know, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> the big punter boy. Oh, I remember reading about this on Twitter. Somebody said, oh, man, our punter is thick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got you. I will admit I tuned out at the start of the fourth quarter. I was like, that's a, that's enough of this game for me. <laughs> yeah, it, it was not an exciting game. Uh, of course, the, most of the excitement on offense came from the run game. Uh, when... So most of the drive stalled, and it, it was just kind of ugly for a lot of the game. And uh, honestly, with so many of the even, not starters, but the more interesting players sitting out for both squads, this preseason game felt really, really struggling. Yeah, it felt even less like a preseason game and more like a scrimmage. <laughs> just like a training camp scrimmage of just your your guys that were out there. Um, I believe they got one more game coming up. One more preseason game is it yep. against Denver this week. It's going to be Denver, Denver Broncos, yes. the last preseason game. Um, Russell well, Wilson going to come out and do everything? Sure, why not? Yeah, Captain Cornball. Just, Can't wait to see him on the sideline. <laughs> show of hands, does anyone think we're going to see any starters in this final game? Any Ed, Kirk, Ingram. Any Ed Ingram will play. Yeah. Oh shit! It all depends on where they're at on some of these position Andrew battles. Booth. Andrew Booth Jr. got banged up. Um, he aggravated his ankle that he has had some on-off issues with. Um, what did O'Connell say in his presser today? He worded it he, a, 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 a kind of weird. He said it's a little more than a day-to-day, but we think he'll be fine for the regular season. I don't quite know what that means. But yeah, the regular season. We, we definitely won't see him on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, he's not going to play in the third preseason game, but maybe he would be ready for the Green Bay game. So he's going to be chilling for a little while. The good thing, the good thing is, it's an ankle and it's not broken. That's nice. A high ankle sprain does suck, but I don't know that that's what he has. But it, it's not a broken. When you get ankle, those non-contact injuries, they can be super scary. And when it came back that it was an ankle and not a knee. That's yep. the first thing that makes you go, oh, good. That's that's good news right there. Yeah. That's exactly where I was going with that. Is Thank God it wasn't an ACL, MCL, any of that stuff. So he, uh, he'll be chilling. He's, he's very he's a very physical player. I think we've picked, all picked up on that from training camp. Um, so w- I, we've seen him struggle a little bit with getting him some penalties and other shit that he's got to have a little bit more of a level head. But I've liked what he's what he's bringing to the table for the Vikings. And you did see as soon as he went out in that game that the uh, they targeted his replacement out there on the field almost immediately. So, you know, it's preseason, but you can see maybe 
teams respect him in coverage a little bit, which is not something that the Vikings have had for a few seasons outside of Patrick Peterson playing really well. Uh, so I, I do hope that he's able to, to come back and play healthy for this team. Uh, he's a piece that we're counting on. I think, I, I think out there on the defense for him. You're correct, Andrew. Practice squad players are allowed in the stadium, but they are not allowed on the sidelines during home games. I'm not sure what they do for away games, but they have to watch from the locker room and during home games. Is Justin Jefferson's insanely large diamond jet necklace allowed on the sidelines? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's a good shiny. Team. Super shiny. Question. Didn't seen have a good game. He did, and they... I've still been watching people on Twitter talking about how they haven't heard his name, so he must be doing terrible. And no, that's not how football works. <laughs> you don't need to be making I, highlight plays, you know, and all that to, to have a good football game. You don't. I think some uh, people were hoping with this. he would have. Uh... He'd have the, you know, the a couple moments like we've seen from Aiden Hutchinson where he came out. No, it's his first play in the game, and he makes a splash play, and he comes out and has a couple more after that. And I think people were hoping that Lewis Seen would come out and just immediately, <laughs> hey, he sacked the quarterback, and then he had a pick six. And, and just and, Audi Cole the preseason, you know? Yeah, just Audi Cole the preseason, and that didn't happen. And so, <laughs> All of oh, preseason a, career here in Minnesota. <laughs> hey, you hey. know what? You know what I'm glad to hear, though? I, we all coveted Kyle Hamilton, and he looks like he's struggling. He is struggling having a rough hard. preseason. And with that defense on that team, you can't struggle. You got to be good. So yeah. maybe Minnesota knew what they were doing. I don't know. It's only been two games. I'm sure he'll be a fine player. But for I the, was confused passing on him for another safety. But, I mean, we got to see how this works out because right now it's, it isn't even playing field now. Now that the draft is over, players are on teams. It doesn't matter where you were drafted. What matters is what you do on the care. football field. Yeah. I don't know. Who, who cares at this point? Like, uh, it's just <laughs> play good for us. I still think with Lewis Seen, guys, we're barely two preseason games into his career. And, like, the Vikings with this new fancy defense they're running are not going to tip their hat and show off the, the pass. The Vikings have tipped nothing. The exotic but when this regular look. season started, there's gonna be there's gonna be no real idea as to how the players are gonna be in their formations. There's right. no idea as far as the plays that are gonna be run. There's no idea as far as the aggressiveness or you know the, when, when this regular season starts, we don't know what's going on. The, the other teams don't know, right. and, and it's it's a bit exciting and scary because I would love to see at least a taste during the preseason, but we're not getting that taste. You know, it's it's great all... for me. I my schedule has me off on Sundays and Mondays. Yeah. Oh my goodness! I am so pumped to not have to watch this at the office at work. It's right all going to be have worth to go it. in for something. It's all going to be worth it when the Vikings line up on September 11th, and we've got a defense out there with Daniil Hunter and Zadaria Smith and Harrison Smith and Lewis Seen, and they're coming at Aaron Rodgers in these exotic looks that you know we haven't seen in minnesota and they're going to town and like that's going to be fun i can't wait for that moment to happen and, I, and we know Sedaris gonna... and daniel hunter can play on the sidelines but can they play on the field together we don't know we'll but what out. is cool is we were hearing about some of those joint practices where they were lining up both those guys on the same side of the field for a pass rush oh holy and shit! <laughs> really? if you don't adjust your offensive line for protection, that's dangerous. Adam, adjust your offensive line. There's not enough <laughs> offensive linemen to block. <laughs> you can't if if they overload one side of the field with those two. I, to Zimmer's credit, they did that a little bit with uh, Everson Griffin, and who was the other? I don't remember who who the other player was at the time, <laughs> but I did see them do that, and it, yeah. it went. It went home, and they got to Drew Brees. That was in the Saints game. It was. Uh, yeah, yeah, they so put if, uh, Everson and Daniil on the inside, which was hilarious. Yeah. It worked. That up-the-middle yeah. pressure worked. The old NASCAR Zimmer, formation. Zimmer had his moments of brilliant. He really did. <laughs> what uh, What do you guys think to Mike's question here? For anybody that listens later on Spotify or Apple or whatever, he asks if C.J. Ham will be on the team this year. I think so. Of course. 
<laughs> Nothing but right now, I think KOC since Zach Davidson him. is not going to make this team's roster, we're looking at three possible tight ends. That's if Irv Smith can come back and be there for week one. Uh, Johnny Munt seems to be a favorite in the clubhouse for his connection to the Rams. So, uh, I mean, he could be sticking around just for that. Uh, ben Olsen's there as strictly blocking, but the fact that he's a blocking tight end puts Ben Ellison's spot in danger because that way they could use CJ Ham as a fullback or a blocking tight end if they wanted to. And uh, it, it all depends on how they want to approach this. The fact that Jake Vargas was let go as a, as a backup fullback really means that they are kind of testing the waters a little bit with training camp and f- formations without fullbacks. So we'll have to wait and see. I think it comes down to who's your best who's your best football players that you have available that you can make your 53 out of. And does CJ Ham beat out like Zach Davidson and some of the other players that you mentioned? Uh yeah, he does. And so he brings more to this team than what some of those players do at the tight end position. And I do think that he's versatile enough that you can you can use him in some of those roles and he'll do better than than what you would be asking them to do. So yeah, CJ Han makes this team. Now, real quick here, Smith, I do think that when we hit, you know, year three, year four of this offense, do you need a fullback? No, you probably don't. But right now, we're still going to use CJ Ham. You know, too, if I had to, you know, you guys watched that Pat McAfee interview with Kirk about three or four months ago. It was really good. Like, my likability for Kirk was already on the rise, but this one spiked it. But he said, you know, they said, hey, you know, out with Zimmer, in with Kevin O'Connell, all this. Like, did you hit him up? How did that work? He goes, yeah, I actually texted him and said, hey, this is my thoughts. You know, take them or leave them. But these are what I think we need to do to be successful. I think there are three people on the offense that this coach and general manager would be like, open door, come in here and tell me what's up. Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, and Dalvin Cook. If you don't think Dalvin Cook is pounding the freaking table for CJ Ham, you're out of your mind. Yeah. Loves that. Get in front, block. And guess what? We talked about it before on the show, too, to Kyle's point and Adam's point. These we the worst position group on this team is tight end. I mean, oh yeah, it's it's pretty obviously and glaring, right? He can do what a tight end does. He can block and he can catch some passes. Put him in the role. Like, I'm not a coach, but these guys can figure that out. I think he makes the team for that reason. Um, I'm hopeful. I'm just kind of hyping him up a little bit here, but Kevin O'Connell's been pretty good about saying, you know, this he's he's hinted at every player once or twice, but everything he said about CJ Ham was good. So I'm optimistic that he'll have he's it. Also, but you're right, Kyle. He's not going to be here forever. And he's also mentioned a couple times like, hey, we're not just running the Rams offense from last year. We're running an offense based on the personnel that, that the Minnesota Vikings have currently. And I I do think it's a fair point to bring up, like you said, uh, having a fullback, a lead blocker for Dalvin Cook is going to be a still a part of the Vikings offense. They're not going to fully move away from that until Dalvin Cook is no longer on the roster. And then, yeah, maybe you can make a case for for not having the fullback. But right now, that's something that the Vikings are going to do because Dalvin Cook does that really well. Yeah, it's it's gonna be fun to watch. And like I said, I think I think he's still got a good spot on this team. Um, and I think truly a guy like CJ Ham is the difference between Dalvin breaking off for a 20 plus yard run or a touchdown versus you know three yards in a cloud of dust. Like, yeah, we got the first down, but God, this drive's taking forever, you know. And he can be that guy, he can he can cause just a little bit more separation, make the hole a little bigger, and Dalvin's gone. So, I just want him on the field to help Garrett Bradbury. <laughs> <laughs> you just go out there and yeah. you just help Bradbury. Yeah, we have one one and a half centers. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be interesting to watch this uh, for this last game because I don't see how they can sit Bradbury because I don't think they've really decided whether or not he's a starter. So with him and Chris Reed, I mean, we're, we probably will see all three. Probably see Schlotman too. Because I don't think this battle is determined yet. Right. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. I Part of me still thinks that the center 
for the Vikings is not even on this roster. Uh, you would hope, though, that if they're going to trade for one, that they would do it soon to get them acclimated with the offense. <laughs> but let see if Mond can play center. <laughs> Why don't we switch him to like wide receiver? <laughs> Let's do the Joe Webb route with him. Let's do. Hey, we're going to switch. CJ Ham's going to be the center, and Garrett's going to be the fullback. We've already seen that he can run pretty elusively with the ball, right? <laughs> We've seen White Davis play some center. That guy could try. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, we got a preseason <laughs> game. Fuck it. Let's do it. <laughs> we'll run that formation like I sent you guys that the Vikings ran with Randall McDaniel at fucking fullback as a lead blocker on a goal line situation. That was a that was a fun old play to watch from the, the Vikings in the <laughs> 1999 season. Firebreather says, I feel like we need to trade for a tight end. Irv hasn't proved you can stay healthy. How about a fourth rounder for a Jets tight end to come in and catch two <laughs> passes? I'm sure they got a couple more they would give to us for a this fourth last rounder. Chance. Yeah. Oh. If Irv doesn't stick and have a good season, he's going to be gone. And that's a shame because he does have so much talent when he is healthy. He was a monster in college at yards after the catch. And that's exactly what this team needs. And he's a solid blocker, too. I mean, when he's on the field, he is an asset. Problem is, is he hasn't been able to be on the field. Well, Firebreather, to your point, too, we talked about this last week. I know I pounded the table for this the last episode or the one before that, but. I believe as it sits right now, now obviously the season's going to go on. Somebody's going to get injured at some point. How severely? We hope very, not very, but depending on, you know, a, a corner, a linebacker, whoever goes down, then your needs change. But as of right now, this team needs to look for a center and a tight end early and often next year and free agency in the draft. Like those are your top two priorities. Can you imagine the Vikings using another first or second rounder on a center? <laughs> I mean, they kind of oh. have to, you know, it it's sucks, it's just like but... the, it's, it, it could go for any position, right? I, I know some have heavier values and weights, but until you get it right, you have to keep trying. It's like quarterback, you know, we can make fun of Chicago for taking Justin Fields after Trubisky, but it's like, well, what are our other options? Get worse. <laughs> like, yeah. You gotta, you gotta keep trying. And like what I hope that this regime does speaking of the offensive line, if I could, dare talk about the big boys in front of Adam and not sound like a fool, but I feel like they took a lot of project players there. They've nailed it on the outside, but that interior has been a crap shoot. And I would really like to see them be strong in the middle. I mean, I'd like to see them strong everywhere, but goodness, man, I, I you know, you know, the Vikings got so lucky. Darius fell in their laps. Yeah. The, I, I don't know how he made it to the Vikings after they traded down. I have no idea. Well, yeah, and Brian O'Neill, because... I don't think anyone thought he was going to be as good as he was. Yeah. I mean, being a second round pick, you know, people that scouted him from Minnesota definitely believed he was. And so far, he's proven to be worth every penny of that. Well, what sucks is what you I like guys about know, like, Brian the, the thing about what the like standard about of this team is like sorry. they, for the standard for the offensive line for the last 10 years has been, well, maybe we can be average. Maybe we can get to average this year, which is wild because you go from AP to Dalvin Cook, and God, these running backs have had to like really be at the top of their game. But well, Hutch and Berger and you know all these guys that really established themselves as being good offensive linemen, and you know of somehow it kind of snuck into the mind of Vikings fans as like you don't have to invest too much in interior linemen, you know you. you they aren't players you really need to focus on too much. Uh, an average player can be good. Finding an average offensive lineman as these defensive linemen continue to get bigger, stronger, and faster, an average offensive lineman isn't going to do it. <laughs> That's the beauty of the draft, man. You line up an average offensive lineman across from Aaron Donald. Do it. Yeah. See Garrett Bradbury. <laughs> I feel like for a while, too, because this team had a really good offensive line for a number of years. Uh, players that have went into the Hall of Fame, you know, have, have, have came out of the, the Vikings there, is that we kind of oh, yeah. got kind of got used to it of like, oh, the offensive line's always going to be good. And yeah, maybe you got to shuffle a guard in and out every now and then. But on the whole, they, they're just going to play really well. And they you make a, a great job. point because that Vikings Hall of Fame, they have so many great linemen in there. They got, you know, Ron Yeri and Mick Tinglehoff. It, it's just, yeah, it's 
it's crazy how many unbelievable offensive linemen have come through Minnesota. Yeah, you had Matt Burke at center there for a while, who was rock solid at center for the Vikings, and you draft a guy like Phil Lodeholt who comes yeah. out and he, he plays really well for the Vikings and you, we kind of took it for granted how well the, 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 they were doing. And you can see we've fallen off just how, how lucky the Vikings were for that length of time to have yeah. those, those quality of players there on the offensive line. Charlotte, two minutes penalty box. Get out of here. <laughs> You're fired for that. I appreciate it, but get, get out. <laughs> um, I want to talk before we get off here because we're almost at an hour. Um, my most excited and I guess potential player, you know, I think he's definitely making the roster, but we've talked a little bit about T.Y. McGill. We've talked about the running backs. We've even talked about these rookie corners. A. Caleb Evans had a great game. I love me some Brian Asamoah. Good Lord. You want to talk about a fun player to watch? I can't wait to watch him develop. He's definitely going to make the team. He's just flying around, and he's got good instincts. I think from everything that I've seen in these very small sample sizes is I see a lot of potential with this guy, and I'm very excited that the Vikings landed him. One of the things that a lot of, a lot of teams pass on for linebackers when they're afraid of a linebacker's size, that they don't feel like he can absorb the punishment of a linebacker. And that's honestly one of the reasons why so many people pass on Eric Kendricks. He's a little bit smaller of a linebacker, but he makes up for it with his athleticism and through solid tackling. Now, Asamoa, if you didn't know any better, you might think he was just a big safety. But that versatility allows him to do more things. He can drop back in coverage. He can, he can rush. And they could honestly, if they wanted to, have a formation where they plugged him in, and they could do almost anything with it. It's, it's the same kind of thing that's kind of going on with Lewis Seen. Mm-hmm. To where it's got that scheme versatility to where they could show so many different looks and do different things. And honestly, that's one reason why I'm excited to see what this Vikings team is going to do when they actually take their playbook and do things with it. Well, and the league has changed so much, too, that you're kind of looking for almost a different body type back there, linebacker. Yes. You need those You need those guys who can drop back into coverage. The days of, like, your your Chad Greenways in the middle are almost... The thumpers. Are, they're almost kind of gone. Like, not completely. They'll, they never will be because the run, stopping the run is always going to be... That's one reason why Ben Gideon never really came back is because he was a solid tackler, but he was yeah. a thumper. You couldn't yep. do much with him. Man, that's a and I like Kyle, Ben Gideon. You have my point there, man, because I, that's exactly what I was thinking and the yeah. point I wanted to make. I'm glad you got to take it though, because I didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> you earlier. But think about like a guy like Micah Parsons down in Dallas. Now I'm not saying Brian Osamo is the next Micah Parsons because Micah Parsons is elite, immediately elite, but. Think about how we've talked, you know, the last 10 to 15 years, how certain linebackers are looking like safeties and safeties look like linebackers, right? They've morphed into this kind of same body type that everybody's looking for. And it's just so much fun because they possess a little bit of everything, you know, great at or good at everything, great at what, you know, overall, I couldn't tell you he does one thing a absolute best, but it's, it's just like we said with Eric Kendricks. He does everything pretty damn good. I can't really find a hole in his game. If the only thing that it was was, oh, well, he's undersized. We'll take him in the second round. We'll take him off your hands immediately. Oh, yes. So I'm excited about uh, Brian Awesome. I really am. I'm going to be paying attention a lot to him uh, trying to figure out this new defense because <laughs> I'm going to be very confused when I actually get to sit down and watch a full game, and it's going to look weird to me. I'm right there with Wes. I got, yeah, I got Wes's comment up on the screen here. Uh, that's interesting. You were at the game live at U.S. Bank Stadium. So what was, like, the general feeling among Vikings fans watching that game? Like, in the stadium, did people feel like the backup quarterback was a was a disaster unfolding in front of them? Or, like, what were what were you feeling? What were the fans feeling around you at the time? If you can on TV, know in the comments. The stadium looked kind of foolish. It looked like there were a lot of people in there, and it sounded like they were kind of rowdy. And we heard Harrison Phillips talking about how he ex- experienced the skull chant there and absolutely fell in love with it. Speaking of that, that guy, he seems like an awesome dude from his interviews, yep. and oh. he's going to be a fantastic player, I bet. 
new favorite player on this team? You betcha. <laughs> like, he's a cool guy. You know what I hope they do better this year, though? These 96 questions with Brian Robinson came back, and they've been pretty sucky to start. They've been rough, yeah. I hope that that gets better because they it's like the wish version of 96 questions. Although the Rock'em Sock'em Robot stuff is pretty fun, and the, the, the riddles – the riddles easy. are good, and I actually got one the other day. I was very happy because I usually <laughs> suck at those. Maybe Can I, admit, I am getting I, smarter. I already quit watching them. I forgot that that was a thing they were doing. <laughs> oh, Lately, social media is kind of killing it. Aside from when they brought in that uh, TikTok comedian or whatever she is. So I, bad. I missed that one. I love I don't the Agar. I'm standing on that hill. That's her. Yeah. It's not just because I think she's attractive. I think it's funny. It might be a little bit of it. <laughs> it might be a little bit. I think, I think it's they... funny when she roasts the teams. There are some funny ones out there. It's, and... it's just not funny I'll when pass. she roasts Minnesota. I don't appreciate that. I'll pass on that. They need to have a current player doing the locker room interview on other players on the team. No offense to Brian Robinson. Chris He's Boyd, good. man. They said he was a clown. I loved when he was holding the yeah, boot. Boyd was doing a good job. <laughs> Dude, Darius Smith. Zadarius Smith is he seems like a funny dude. He seems to have good chemistry with everyone. Yeah. Let him let him do a segment like this. I don't think it works as well because he's not a current player anymore. And so you don't have the same locker room chemistry. When he was doing it when he was with the team, that was just the that was the guys in the locker room <laughs> pouting around. He knew everyone that. was gonna say digs. He knew it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, too. You gotta think you see him in practice. You like there were some good ones where he and Everson went back and forth. I love the one where he's asking Sam Bradford something, and he's like, oh, yeah, you went to Oklahoma. You didn't get one of those national championship rings. I'm like, damn, that hurts. <laughs> That's got to hurt a little bit. But yeah, you, you need that personality there. You need that connection. He said Sean Mannion. Get out of here, Cliff. Get out of <laughs> here. Executive producer. Yeah, I mean, anything. He can do anything. You know what? I take it back. Stay, Cliff. We'll have him do anything but be quarterback number two through five. He can do any other job. <laughs> Wes, uh, so for anybody that listens earlier, Wes said, thank, uh, thank God we got Mullins. He was at the game. I thought our backups were done. If uh, I thought with our backups, we are totally done if Cousins get hurt. And he says, uh, it was actually a great crowd at U.S. Bank. When the defense was on the field, it got loud at times. But when the offense was a lot of doubt, uh, people yelling at Mannion to get off the field. <laughs> <laughs> Poor <Goodness>. guy. <laughs> That's funny. You know what, though? This speaks well for just kind of, I think, the atmosphere that Vikings fans are in right now. Uh, it was pretty toxic at the end of the, the Zimmer Spielman administration. And yeah. fans, are, fans are showing up to preseason games excited there were a couple people dressed up and we're doing school chants and we're have violent. you seen the photos from washington's preseason game what the stands looked like oh it was awful it was a barren stadium from oh a freaking zombie movie <laughs> wow it was awful oh i was just telling my dad's girlfriend about that last night too they were over and having dinner when i got home from work and we're talking about uh you know he asked us like well, how the vikings do we played washington i was like oh my god did you guys play there or kansas city He's like, oh, it was in Kansas City. I was like, thank God, that field fucking sucks out there. We talked about all the injuries. You know, they made that chart with places on the field, and they'll put, like, the date the players oh, got God. hurt. It's so bad out there. That and Soldier Field are the two worst stadiums. Got to be. They got to fix that. that so I got a question for you guys. What's up? Should, should we put any kind of concern into the fact that the Vikings have lost six straight preseason games? No. Should that worry us a little bit about depth on the team? I think it's. I think there's too many variables to put an actual level of concern. Would you like to see it? Sure. This is a totally new team. Is it because our backup quarterbacks have been garbage? I. Yeah. I mean, partially. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Mannion getting on the field is never good for anybody. No. What if Unless Nick Mullins comes team. in, wins the Vikings their first preseason game after six losses, and the backups all look better? Wouldn't that be something? That would be yeah. a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Do you think he'll suit up on Saturday? I hope so. It's quick. That's a quick turnaround. It's it a fast on, turnaround. It, it depends on how much he knows the terminology. And I almost, I know he's only a, a backup, but I don't know if you put him in that situation. 
if it's too soon, it's too soon. Don't don't rush him on the field. We can we can survive another week of Mondmanian bullshit. Can we? <laughs> We're gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, on the other hand, you know, you've got the Ravens, I think what they say they've won ten straight preseason games or something like that. I know they're on a huge roll. That 0 and 16 but, Lions team went 4 and 0 in the preseason. That's why I don't put any investment in that. I'm like, well, it don't, it whatever. Well, Lions had depth, just not the starter. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, Adam. Touche. But uh, for those of you who were in the Survival League last year, you should have gotten an email with uh, the link to bring you back in to play this year because. The Kyles said they would be generous enough to do the prizes this year because I am struggling financially and uh, need my monies. So they're going to take care of that. But yeah, you should have that email. I don't know if there was something posted on Facebook or something like that about it. But uh, yeah, it, it is running again. Watch for that. We'll post, Join. We'll post it up on Facebook. Kyle Smith, maybe you can do a quick rundown for anyone new who might be with us. Or yeah. To what exactly the survival league is? So I'm, we're going to have limited number of spots, just because if we have you know a hundred people who do it, there will be fucking fifteen winners, and then the prizes are going to get out of control. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just like you know, kind of. I, I can't speak to it fully because I can't compare it directly to 22? fantasy football, but it's a version of fantasy football. All right. If you've never played before in a survival league, here's the gist. You get to pick one team per week throughout the season. Once you pick that team, you can't pick them again. So this is based on matchups. There's no over-unders. This isn't like betting. This is outright who do you think is going to win the game. So you look for whoever's playing like the Houston Texans that week. That's generally going to be my game plan. Who's but playing? the strategy of that, too, is don't use a team if you think you might want to use another use that team later. Correct. You could look and see who you think the bottom five worst teams are. Look at their schedules, see the matchups. But if you pick, like, if you take the powerhouse teams that are picked to win the Super Bowl, the Bills, the Chiefs, uh, the Rams, all these the great games. teams, you want to save those for later because the safer you play it early, the harder it's going to be down the line. Right. So don't pick the give me's. You have to pick the the close ones. You know, like I'm just trying to think of middle of the road teams right now. I can't think of any of them. But you'll see the matchups. You'll kind of know once you look. Oh yeah, that's going to be a close game, or maybe it's a touchdown, and then you're going to see something like this team's going to blow that team out of the water, twenty-one points. You know what's so. a lot of fun is when you can tell everyone kind of has the same thought process during the week based on who they're picking, and then there's an upset, and everyone's like, "Hold, oh, I can't believe, the, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe the Bills lost this game, and we knocked out like three people from the survival league because it looked like a shoe in." I think that happened last year with the Jaguars. I think it got everybody but me and the guy that won. <laughs> and you have to make sure set a reminder in your phone because they might send you an email but you might overlook it you might be busy who knows if you don't make a pick you get a strike don't be me and not make a pick and now you're already down one strike because once you get the third strike you're out but i will chip in i'm gonna buy whoever wins a purple people podcast shirt and or hoodie of their choice um kind of trying to promote kyle west's stuff as well to maybe get some artwork on there we could do a little deal on that. We'll try to get you something cool. I'll try yeah, to find we'll something cool on eBay. I think Kyle's got original. some really cool prints that he took from uh, Vikings training camp back in the day. I do. I got some of U.S. Bank Stadium. I'll have to go through. Maybe I got. Some. Oh yeah, from when you took that tour, right? Yeah, correct. from back in the yeah, locker room and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yep. There you go. Neat. Wes, I totally agree. Wes says if you've never seen the stadium in person, you have to see it. Seeing it on TV doesn't do any justice. It's an amazing stadium. I was virtually speechless when I first stepped in the doors for the first time. Dude, you're preaching to the choir here. It is on my bucket list. It's the only thing I want to do travel-wise. I don't think it's going to happen this year. I'm buying a home, and I'm I'm literally moving in this week. So, I went to my buddy's year? wedding down in Kansas. It was on a Saturday, and I hurried back after you know to, to be there for for Monday night for that home opener of the stadium against the Green Bay Packers, and I I got to see the Vikings beat the Packers on a last-second interception by Trey Waynes. Yep. And that was a fantastic moment. I can't Adam, wait. You and I have both been to the Metrodome and U.S. Bank yep. Stadium. And I've also been is, to TCF there is, I think when the Vikings were there. There is no comparison, absolutely no, no comparison, between 
the old Metrodome and the new U.S. Bank Stadium. It is such a fantastic facility that the Vikings play in. And I even got to give them credit. Like, I'm more nostalgic for training camp being in Mankato. But, boy, the practice facility that they built is top-notch. Down oh, yeah, TCO well. performance in, uh, in Egan, Viking Lakes is beautiful. Yeah. I still want to go stay at that, ho- that new hotel they have right next to the practice facility because – the food looks amazing, you know all everything. It's it's an expensive hotel, but yeah, it's it's the Vikings hotel I, pretty much. So. I want to make a trip to that too because they've got a lot of really fun fan centric stuff you can go to. Um, what is it? It's and if like you haven't been Vikings, to the museum, well worth it. I was just gonna say that Vikings Hall of Fame museum thing looks like a really fun experience to go to. I still don't understand, and you guys can explain, because I obviously am not from or lived in Minnesota ever, but I still don't understand how the Metrodome's roof was inflatable. What, and that, I'm a, that has to be with like fans I, and the way the engineering works. Was it not loud as shit? I really wasn't. Enge- I'm not an engineer, so I don't know how to explain it. You could, I, I think- it was, wasn't super loud, but you could hear when it was getting kicked on. And, you know, because it was... It would look like it was kind of deflating a little bit, and you'd hear it kick on, and then it would come back up a little bit. And But it wasn't any kind of really disrupting noise. Shout out to John Young. What's up, homie? <laughs> he says, have we talked about how bad Bradbury is yet? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were saying that him and CJ Ham are going to play one and a half center spots, so you're going to have two centers this year. That's Sadly, nobody saying. stepped up to take Bradbury's job yet, so. Ugh. We'll see. Come on, Schlotman, pick it up. <laughs> Pressure inside was higher than outside. Yeah, until that four feet of snow fucking collapsed it. That's so sad, dude. That, that, that couldn't have fit any better than the worst season after the, the highest of hopes in that season with Favre. That 2010. That next one. Dude, it was so bad. Adam, correct me if I'm wrong. 2010 was the first year we started doing this podcast, right? No, I think we were 2009. Were we the far of year? I don't remember, I, I but it was, either, it was either 2009 or 2010 was really early in us doing this. And boy, oh, yeah. that was a wild season to try to cover from week to week. And now there's hundreds <laughs> of Vikings podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> we hopped on the trend early, but we never got big. Oh, well. Right. I kind of wish... It would be. It would have been fun to cover the 2010 season. Is because I think we're we're so much better at this now. It would be fun to cover that season with as good as we are at doing this right now. Oh, that'd have been great! Holy shit, there was some <laughs> wild stuff that went on. <laughs> John, but we I've are running been, long. I've only been on this show since Mike Zimmer became coach, and it's <laughs> there's been a lot of heartbreak through those so years what's too. The, real quick, I know we want to wrap this up, but what's the craziest story? that like you remember talking about Smith like on this podcast. I don't know. It, it depends like, on what you define as crazy. Like the Mike Zimmer eye surgery thing where like all of it's a sudden. probably the Adrian Peterson stuff because it just hit home. Yeah. And I'm like, really, bro? Um, I, it depends on your definition of crazy. I'll tell you the worst one was that Eagles loss. I wanted to jump yeah. off a skyscraper after that game. Like I was like, well – I remember the Favre year, and I was disappointed, and I didn't think it could hurt again, and now it hurts even worse than that year. <laughs> that was awful. My favorite still the Taco Bell drive through episode. <laughs> yeah, the Josh Gordon Taco Bell. <laughs> yep, the supplementary draft when we were talking oh, about that one. That's oh. the only time I've ever cared about the supplemental draft. Was <laughs> the worst thing was the Favre. Yeah, Favre died on the field at Minnesota Gopher Stadium. <laughs> I was I like, oh my Teddy, god, it's a it's an actual dead body. Whew. The episode the episode where we had to talk about Teddy getting injured was just brutal. Oh, man. brutal. Because man, we all love Teddy. I still love Teddy. He's I do too. My, one of my favorite players this team has drafted. And that was just heartbreaking and deflating and just the most Viking shit. Oh, the Blair Watch Seattle kick too. Well, let's get out of here before we make ourselves too depressed. <laughs> so I, I do want to thank everyone. <laughs> Who joined us here in the chat because you guys make this so much better. And I still can't believe we did this for so long. Just recording on Skype and not having this interaction because oh, man, this is awkward. so much better. 
Dude, hey, th this is on. Okay, I like a comic called Shane Gillis. You guys should check out his special on YouTube in Austin. It's funny as hell. But this, he has a, a bit on there about his his uncles. You know, your your old relatives that just get on social media and they just tweet into the void. Dude, these these episodes are gonna outlast humanity. They're on a server forever. We are on <laughs> yeah. the internet forever and a lot. This is wild. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you can check me out on the Viking Age on Dead Walking, uh, MN Viking Zombie on every social media platform. Kyle does art. It's, the link is pinned on the top of the Facebook page. You can check all that out. Uh, you can watch from Mr. Smith. If you travel to his area, he does some concerts and uh, interacts with his fans. All you got to do is light your lighter and say free bird, and he's on it. On it immediately. <laughs> Could be in the middle of doing the Humpty Dance and nope, switching it on oh. over. But yeah, on the beh on behalf of me and both Kyles, thanks again to everyone who joined in and stay classy Minnesota. <laughs>